Hello, my name is Ronan and welcome to my channel. In my channel, we'll talk about mostly ocean liners and maybe some gaming here. There! But for the first topic, I want to talk about my favorite trip from history, of course, talking about none other than the Olympic. <laughs> The Olympic was built in Harlington with Belfast as the first of three Olympic class liners, including the Olympic, Titanic, and Britannic. She was the response to rival Kinnard Lines, Lusitania, and Mauritania. White Star Line needed to catch up. When the Olympic was complete, it would be the largest ship in the world. The construction managers were Lord Peary, Alexander Carlyle, and of course Thomas Andrews. When she was launched, she was the largest ship in the world, with four massive funnels, the fourth one was a dummy, and capacity for 2,435 people. Her maiden voyage arriving in New York, she was opened up to the public, and 8,000 visitors came. One of the most interesting facts about Olympic was her collision with HMS Hawk. On 20th September 1911, the Olympic was on her fifth voyage when the cruiser HMS Hawk was running parallel to her. The Hawk started getting pulled into the Olympic's propellers, making a hole near the Olympic's stern. What was worse was that HMS Hawk was designed to ram other ships. Both ships got back to a port for repairs, but what White Star Line took from this is it proved Olympic and her sister ships unsinkable. After the Titanic was complete, Titanic stole two titles from Olympic. White Star Line's flagship and the largest ship in the world. On 14th April 1912, Olympic and her new captain, Herbert Haddock, received the distress call from Titanic about 505 miles west by south. When Titanic sank, she offered to take on the survivors of the Titanic, but the Carpathia said no because they thought it would cause panic to see the Titanic's identical sister ship right in front of their face and ask them to board. This command was given by Mr. Ismay. The Olympic continued on the voyage and arrived in Southampton on 21st April, 1912. After the Titanic disaster, Olympic continued on her voyages until strikes due to a lack of lifeboat and a public fear of sailing. She was pulled out of service on October 9, 1912. Her lifeboats were increased from 20 to 68. A double hole was also added. She also received an extra wide tight compartment and five wide tight bulkheads were extended to B-deck. This corrected a mistake on Titanic design, where the bulkhead only rose as far as E or D deck, just a little bit over the water line. In this design, water was able to spill over the top of the bulkhead, making the ship sink. In August 1914, Britain entered the First World War. The Olympics route was terminated to Glasgow. Portholes were also blocked out on the Olympic and she was painted in the grey colour scheme. On 21st November 1916, she left on her last commercial voyage of the war due to a threat from German U-boats. On 27th October 1914, she was passing by Lost Willie when she received a distress signal from the British cruiser HMS Audacious. She quickly took on 250 of Audacious's crew and then a tow cable was attached between the two ships. But it failed and all rest of the crew members were evacuated to Olympic. The commander of the home fleet thought it would have a demoralizing effect on the British public, so he ordered the Olympic to be held at port in Los Willy with no communication, and the passengers couldn't leave the ship. When she returned to Belfast, White Star Line wanted to wait out the war, when Olympic was requisitioned as a troop ship. However, the Admiralty did not want to use Olympic because the size would make the Olympic vulnerable to enemy U-boats. Sadly, a shortage of ships meant Olympic had to go into wartime service. Olympic Sister Britannic was a hospital ship. Olympic was fitted with 12 pounders and 4.7 inch guns. On 24th September 1915, Olympic left the Cape of Good Hope. Capable of carrying up to 6,000 troops under the command of Bertram Fox Hayes, she left for Greece. Olympic did some fascinating things in the war. On October 1st, they spotted lifeboats from the French ship Provence. They picked up the boats, which had been dropped off from the ship in the morning. However, the British Admiralty accused the captain for stopping the ship in U-boat infested waters. But the French Vice Admiralty loved that he did it and gave him the gold medal of honor. In 1916, people thought the Olympic could carry troops to India through the Cape of Good Hope. But they decided not to because the bunkers, which had been designed for transatlantic crossings, did not have the capacity for such a long journey at a good speed. May 12, 1918, early morning, just 1,600 feet in front of the ship, 
A U-boat was spotted ahead. She opened fire and turned to ram the sub, which crashed, dived 98 feet, and turned to a parallel course to the Olympic. Olympic hit the submarine near the conning tower. Olympic's port propeller sliced through the pressure hull of the submarine. The sub's crew blew a ballast and then abandoned the flooding submarine. The USS Davis sighted the 31 survivors of the U-103 and rescued them. Later, people found out that U-103 actually wanted to fire two torpedoes at Olympic, but they couldn't flood the tubes. Hayes was awarded the DSO for his service on Olympic. American soldiers in the 59th Regiment paid for a plaque in one of the loungers on Olympic to remember the event. The plaque said, This tablet presented by the 59th Regiment of the United States Infantry commemorates the sinking of the U-103 by the Olympic on May 12, 1918 in latitude 49, 16 minutes north degrees, 51 minutes west on the voyage from New York to Southampton with American troops. Olympic has reported to have carried 201,000 troops and other personnel, but in 347,000 tons of coal, traveling 184,000 miles. From this, she earned the name The Old Reliable. After the war, Olympic got a refit, converting her from coal to oil, which gave a much steadier engine RPM and reduced the refueling time from literal days to hours. They also found there was a small hole under the waterline in Olympic side and it was concluded to be a torpedo fired from the SMU-56. She also got new running mates, including Majestic and Homeric. She remained a very fashionable ship and carried people like Charlie Chaplin, Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, and Prince Edward. Olympic and the White Star Line were affected very badly by the Great Depression and then the United States new immigration laws. Later, Olympic was passing over Titanic's last recorded position when the ship began to shake violently. It shook for about two minutes. This incident was later reported to be caused by the 1929 Grand Banks earthquake. On May 15, 1934, at 11.06 a.m., in extremely heavy fog, Olympic struck an Nantucket light ship LV-117. After White Star Line joined Cunard, Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth were built, and the older fleet gradually needed to be retired. Olympic left Southampton for the last time on 11 October 1935. Along with her rival Mortania, Olympic went to Jero to be scrapped. Olympic fact. Olympic had a very close tie to Halifax, Nova Scotia, from her regular visits there. Artist Arthur Lismer drew her multiple times there. They even named a dance hall after the RMS Olympic, Olympic Gardens Dance Hall. Thank you for listening. Please comment down below what your favorite thing about Olympic was, and subscribe and smash that like button.